from the nation's capital. This week, with Chief Washington Correspondent George Stephanopoulos, live from the museum on Pennsylvania Avenue. Good morning. He was the youngest Kennedy brother who lived the longest, the only one who could prepare for his death. And by the time Teddy Kennedy was buried next to Bobby and John late yesterday, you just knew it was the farewell he wanted. From the Senate he served, the sons he loved. I said, I, I can't do this. He said, I know you can do it. There is nothing that you can't do. We're going to climb that hill together, even if it takes us all day. When he first got elected and my cousin Joe was a member of Congress and I came to Congress, Dad finally celebrated saying, finally, after all these years, when someone says, who does that damn Kennedy think he is? There's only a one in three chance they're talking about me. And the president. The greatest expectations were placed upon Ted Kennedy's shoulders because of who he was. But he surpassed them all because of who he became. And with that, let me bring in Senators John Kerry and Orrin Hatch. Welcome to you both. And you both uh, spoke movingly Friday night at the celebration for Senator Kennedy. And I want to begin with you, Senator Kerry, because you called this last year of Senator Kennedy's life the sweetest of seasons. And I wonder if you could share a little bit of what you learned and saw of your friend in this last year. Well, he, uh, he was so graceful, George, and uh, courageous. Uh, and I think the most important thing is that, that, that he was able to see and feel the love and affection and the accomplishment of his lifetime. Uh, so that in the end, when he, when he went, he was truly ready and at peace. And I think there, there's a beauty in that. I and mean, there was, that was one of the themes, really, of this whole week. And Senator Hatch, uh, you cracked everybody up uh, Friday night when you talked about your, your friend, Senator Kennedy, and especially when you talked about those old days, sometimes when he was feeling no pain, uh, in your words, on the Senate floor. But it, you spun it out into a story of redemption. Yeah, I, actually, Teddy was a very religious person. And, uh, you know, when Vicky came into his life, it, it changed a lot of things. Of course, we had some experiences before that as well that were very redemptive uh, and helpful. And all I can say is that uh, the latter part of Teddy's life was uh, really, uh, really tre tremendous. And I enjoyed being with him. You know, we were, we, we were like fighting brothers. I mean, we'd go at each other, and then he'd walk up to me and and throw his arms around me and say, how'd I do, you know? <laughs> and I used to just laugh, and I, I used to really rib him and give him a rough time, too. You said fighting brothers, and I, I, I couldn't help but notice you and Senator Kerry already talking about health care yeah. right before we I went. Said, we're going to get uh, Orrin. Orrin's going to be our man. He's well, going to be the go-to Republican. <laughs> He's going to do what Ted Kennedy would have done, right? All they, have to, all they have to do is just start thinking straight, and I'll be right there well, with the, him. I'll and, tell you. And that's the big question. You say, do what Ted Kennedy uh, would have done. And, you know, uh, this has been a big part of the debate this week. In fact, Secretary Sebelius engaged it just a couple of days ago. The best possible legacy is to pass health reform this year and have a bill that President Obama could sign. And hopefully at every step along the way, they'll ask themselves, what would Teddy do, and move it forward. But Senator Kerry, there already is a big debate over what would Teddy do. I mean, I think a lot of liberals and progressives saying he would fight for this public health insurance option and, you know, if that if it didn't if you didn't have that it wasn't worth doing others look at it and i think you may be one of them who say no the lesson of senator kennedy is that he got what he could get the perfect couldn't be the enemy of the well <clears throat> ted would put the facts on the table and he'd put the reality of life for a lot of americans on the table and the reality of life is that we have over 87 million americans every year during some portion of the year who don't have insurance and almost 50 million who all the time don't have insurance. It costs them and costs America an enormous amount of money. We are not managing an efficient health care system. And so we are delivering worse health care for more money than many other nations in the world. Now, Orrin knows that. We know we can do a better job of providing health care to Americans. And what Teddy would do is he would fight for that public option because he believes believed that the public option, as I do, 
is an effective, the best way possible to but be he able could, he to could reduce costs. Now, let me just well, finish. The let me just finish. Be there. But let me finish. He would fight for it, and he'd do everything in his power to get it, just like he did for the minimum wage, or like he did for children's health care, et cetera. But if he didn't see the ability to be able to get it done, he would not throw the baby out with the bathwater. He would not say no to anything, because we have to reduce the cost. We have to make these changes. And he would find so the best way forward. So he wouldn't agree with those like Howard Dean who say it's not worth <clears throat> doing if you don't have the public health insurance option. I think there is an enormous amount, uh, George. Here's what Teddy would do. He would say, I'm going to fight the fight. And if and when we get to the point that we can't get there, we'll see whether or not we can do enough to make good happen out of this. And, and you can't make that measurement today. We have to go down that road. You said uh, earlier this year, Senator Hatch, that uh, Senator Kennedy was really missed uh, in the negotiations because right. of his ability to speak to progressives and reach out uh, to Republicans. What about going forward right now? Who can fill that void? And is there a deal to be had here? Well, the one thing that Kennedy had, he could bring together all of the all of the base groups of the Democratic Party. They, they wouldn't take him on once he made up his mind. And as somebody who, who over the last 33 years passed uh, almost every health care bill that works, many of them with uh, uh, Ted Kennedy, in fact, most of them with Ted Kennedy, everything from orphan drugs to the three AIDS bills to the CHIP bill, you can just name it, to, you know, uh, even, the, even uh, people with disabilities. I mean, we worked on all of those together. In every case, he fought as hard as he could, like John has said here. But when he recognized that, that you know, he couldn't get everything that he wanted, but he, he could get a good bill uh, by working with the other side and making true compromise, he would always come So you through. think he'd move in that direction I have now. no doubt about it. Is I mean, it if he was here, now? I don't think we'd be in the mess we're in right now. And, and, and look, he, Ted was the leading liberal in the Senate, in the whole Congress, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, others come very close to him, like John here. I mean, very good people. But, you know, let's be honest about it. The people out there are very concerned. They don't want a Washington-run government plan. It's just that simple. And I think that's showing up everywhere throughout America. When Medicare is $38 trillion in unfunded liability, and then they want to take four or $500 billion out of Medicare, I mean, come on, this just doesn't make sense. And Teddy would have recognized that. And, look, I, we used to get in tremendous fights, he and I, but we'd always come together in the end. And it was always because uh, both of us were willing to go to the center. And sometimes he'd go to the center right. I mean, Chip was a center right bill. So what's going but to the center One of the things now? that Teddy would make clear, uh, and, I, and I want to now, is that no one is talking about a government-run, Washington-based health care plan. That is not what people are talking about. So if we can get a reality onto the table, which Orrin is usually pretty good at doing, uh, we can have a good conversation here. I'm convinced we're going to do this. I believe uh, better judgment is going to prevail. I think we're going to come back, uh, begin this discussion anew in the way that we ought to, and I think we're going to get it done. Democrats and Republicans, if you look at uh, across the broad Senate, have agreed on a couple of components uh, of the right. bill. These insurance reforms, you can't be denied right. health care if you're, if, if you're sick. You can't get thrown out if you're sick. Um, a lot of Democrats and Republicans say that maybe we should have this individual mandate that require people to buy insurance, to couple that with the reforms. Bill Bradley points out today, uh, I think it was in the New York Times, that you know maybe this should include some malpractice reform uh, as well. Are they, those three things the building blocks of a deal? Yeah, they really are. You know, uh, Democrats have been unwilling to take on the personal injury lawyers. And look, uh, there are cases that really deserve huge rewards, huge, huge, judge, huge judgments. We've got to find some way of getting rid of the frivolous cases. and. Most of them are. Most and, of them and that's are brought, doable. Most of, yeah, that's doable. Most of them are brought uh, to, to, you know, to get the, the defense costs. They know that once they bring them, the insurance company is going to have to pay the defense costs rather than take a chance of a runaway jury. But it's not just that. It's the other elements you've been talking about, too. Those are three very important. And then if you add some subsidies to that to move towards covering more people. Yes, which start. I think we have some, actually, I think we have some flexibility on as to sort of the rate and manner in which you do that. So I, I think that there are ways to do this, George. As a member of the Finance Committee, uh, I've been part of this discussion, uh, though many of us would like to see it broadened in, in some ways. I, I'd like to, I mean, you know, my question to Oren and to others is, you know, who is the Republican? Who are the Republicans, plural, who are prepared to step up and do as Ted Kennedy would have done here. You were part of the negotiations earlier this year, but then stepped away. You ready to come back? Sure, I've always been ready to do that. But look, you talk about an individual mandate. 
The problem with an individual mandate is that the people who really hurt the most are those on the lower end of the wage spectrum. They either lose their jobs, get cut back in pay, or the company goes overseas. Once you start doing that, because the, the theory behind that is that you penalize the company if they don't provide uh, insurance for their, for their people uh, by, uh, by having them have it surcharged. And, and look, let's just be honest about it, it's a very difficult thing to do. There are some ways we could do this. Not, Actually, both, are, sides, both sides are, 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 arguing, are arguing for insurance reform. That's not the issue. The issue is how do we put all these elements together? Let me switch the to truth is we're quick. doing that very effectively in Massachusetts. Uh, Ted Kennedy was part of making that happen, a key part of making that happen. We went from 10% of our folks who had no insurance down to 2.6%, the lowest percentage of uninsured in the nation. And it has worked. And companies have not left. Companies, in fact, are delighted with the better distribution of costs uh, in the state. So what we need to do is have people who want to sit down and not be bound by ideology, not be the prisoners of a political strategy, but who want to get health care done based on the best way to get it Let done. If we did that, we'll Can get I it make done. a point on that? that, that you know, that's, that's one of my points that I've been making is that Utah is not Massachusetts, neither is any other state. Massachusetts is having a very, very difficult time because of the costs involved in their program. But it is their right to do that. Utah has one of the best health care systems in the country. Most people agree with that, as does uh, uh, Minnesota. Because, that, and I think the demographics in each state are different. I think if we give some flexibility, we might be able to have a very, very good health care system. Another issue that That's what worked this. on CHIP.